Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Rich Reviews. So today you join us traveling into Dick Lovett's for the 458 to go into the workshop. It's dropping into the workshop today to resolve a problem that's existed since I collected the car and that issue is a problem with what's called the NIT. Um, I, I've researched and I can't find out what NIT stands for, but in effect, it's the module for the screens. So it's the whole, the whole screen module. Um, and the problem is in relation to the right-hand screen locking up um, intermittently. And you can tell when it's locked up visually um, by the slot that's used to display the time, the text window that's used to display the time on the right-hand screen that turns into uh, a blue and white, the only word you can describe is like a blue and white flag with a, a horizontal line across separating the two colors. So it's blue and white. And, and that's existed since I collected the car. When I first actually started the car up, that issue existed. And I, have, I mentioned it to, um, to the sales guy. And uh, the perception was it was to due to the, the battery being on low on charge, which is you know quite quite likely because um, as we know these cars are very sensitive to low battery voltage, and you have to keep them on a the battery conditioner all the time, and the batteries fail after a couple of years if you don't use a lithium ion battery because they just do because they're very hard on uh, they're very hard on batteries. But uh, I, I noted throughout the duration of ownership that that glitch kept happening, um, and it was intermittent, but it would happen predominantly at least I'd say it would happen at least once every time I was out in the car on average sometimes it didn't but most times it did and it's annoying because in effect what the glitch does is it locks out the right hand screen functionality so you can't ac access the infotainment system you can't use the GPS navigation um, so it's a real pain in the backside so just put bumpy road mode on because we're into a bumpy area in the village or in, in the town and uh, so I, I, I mentioned this, I didn't mention it straight away to Dick Lovitz. I mentioned it straight away when I collected the car that there was a, an issue. And as I said, they perceived it was to, due to the battery and the workshop looked at it just a short term, just a short period of time, because obviously I was collecting the car. Um, and then uh, subsequently I mentioned it to, to, to Dick Lovitz. They took the car in, assessed it. Um, Ferrari um, perceived it might be the cable, um, which has, uh, and in ABLS, I think it is, but it's a specific type of cable that connects the controlling module to the knit screen. Um, and it's, it obviously deals with the communications between the module and the screen. And they thought it was the cable, but then when they reviewed it more, they'd noted that sometimes the cable resolves it, but always they've had to replace the actual screen module. So they said rather than the workshop having to replace the, the lead and then replace the module later on anyway, um, that they would order the, the screen module in. And uh, with regards to covering the costs, etc., Dick Lovett kindly said that they would cover the costs. Now, obviously you could argue the point that it's their responsibility anyway, because I did mention it when I first collected the car, but there was nothing you know, formally agreed with regards to the issue, because it wasn't known at the time. So um, you know, thank you to Dick Lovett for looking after me again and for, um, and for covering the cost on that, because it's a fair substantial replacement unit, as you can imagine. I believe the knit unit is around six thousand pounds because it's, as I say, the whole screen module. It's not just the right-hand screen; um, it's the whole, the whole screen, um, the whole screen display system. So uh, it's, we're driving in today to have that unit replaced. It's Ferrari have sent the unit into Dick Lovett's and and they've got the unit in today. So I've had to get the car out of winter storage. So it's actually around, um, I think, around two degrees outside at the moment. So definitely weather that I would not normally be driving this car in. I've got it in wet mode at the moment because uh, even though these aren't turboed, naturally aspirated, so they don't spin the wheels as easily as the 488, the F8 um, and the uh, SF90. The SF90 is crazy spinning its wheels, etc. But uh, they do spin their wheels if you hit the throttle a bit hard, especially in icy conditions. So obviously want to be a bit safe. And that's the key thing with driving these cars. You've got to be sensible. It's all very well getting used to them and thinking you're owner of the power etc 
nobody's ever owner of the power of these types of cars. You always got to drive sensibly and drive to road conditions. We're just going to drop the car in. We're not far off now. Um, Dick Lovitz, drop the car in and we'll be there. I'll be working from the office at Dick Lovitz for a few hours and then um, bring the car back. <laughs> So we're just on the return trip now, a bit of a cock up on the dealership side. They hadn't ordered the right parts in, won't go into it, all the ins and outs of it, but um, it, these things happen. So they, it was useful for them having the car so that they could check the right parts to order, a particular ID on the cable that needs to be ordered. That interfaces the NIP module to the actual screen display unit. And uh, the car has to come back in again, um, which is a bit of a pain in the ass, but it is what it is, these things happen. Um, so that was the conclusion of today really, um, but uh, it's never a bad day when you get to uh, turn up at, uh, at one of the main dealerships, if not the main dealership in the UK for Ferrari, and you uh, get to walk around, it's like a sweet shop, so it's not never a bad thing to have all those Ferraris around you and to, um, and to be able to go and have a look around at them and see all those Ferraris come and go. And uh, interestingly enough, there was a, a blue LaFerrari um, that's owned by none other than Nick Mason. So that was in for service. So it's quite cool to see his car. And uh, never a bad day when you get to drive the Ferrari out anyway, although I'd never drive it in, in these periods. It's been, a, it's been a nice day today for, um, relatively speaking, for a UK winter. So that's pretty much it for today's video. Thanks a lot for watching guys. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Quite important um, for us, especially at this time, coming close to hitting our 1,000 subscriber base point, which is um, the first hurdle, first major hurdle for us. For those subscribers um, that have stayed loyal, thanks very much. Um, if you're not subscribed, then please think about subscribing and we'll see you in the next video.